And for more on Alibaba's stock market launch, I'm joined by Matt Turlip. He's a senior analyst at Financial Researches. Prifco, Matt, great to have you on the show. Hi, it's great to be here tonight. So, Matt, Alibaba reportedly clearing the final hurdles with uh, U.S. regulators, the Securities and Exchange Commission. What do you think still needs to be ironed out? What could be the potential sticking points here? So right now, Alibaba is in the last stages of preparing for this very large roadshow, this big production. So they're going to be going through their presentation for the roadshow and really just ironing out the last few key details with the SEC Corporate Finance Committee. At this point, they've had five revisions to their prospectus, mm -hmm. and they can't have much more left to clear up with the SEC over the next few days before they file their, their final prospectus and launch their roadshow on Monday, September 8th. Matt, one of the issues, potential issues, has been the structuring of Alibaba with regards to variable interest entities. It has that unusual structure of a VIE, uh, which is meant to allow investors to buy into internet and other mm -hmm. businesses in which Beijing bans or limits foreign ownership. So explain how this VIE structure works and why it could be a sticking point. So in the VIE, the shareholder Shareholders that purchase these shares, the investors, won't actually have a claim on any of the assets that Alibaba owns. They really only have a contractual like obligation to the profits at, of Alibaba. Mm -hmm. So that's the concern right there is if something, uh, the board is actually also controlled by Jack Ma and the Alibaba partnership. So the concern is that the board can act without the complete interest of the shareholders and the shareholders don't have much recourse to protect themselves. So Alibaba's going to have to get past the variable interest entity structure and convince investors that they don't need to be concerned about this. Well, they have 100 forward. meetings across three countries to do this when this grand roadshow launches. What other issues do you think investors may be concerned about? So I think they have three main goals for this roadshow that investors are going to want. They're going to want to meet Jack Ma, Maggie Wu, the CFO, mm -hmm. and the CEO for the first time. It's, roadshows are really about the personal touch. It's the first time that the investors really get to meet the CEO, the CFO, and hear them speak in person, as opposed to reading the prospectus or watching the video. So it's going to be the personal touch of connecting with the investors. Does it really matter when a, com to, when a company had a profit of, tripled profit of $2 billion last quarter? Does it really matter if Jack Ma is not the most personable guy in the room? Well, you're going to want to see him speak, see his confidence, feel how sincere he is. That personal touch matters when the management has as much control as Alibaba does, as we just discussed. Well, one of the potential issues for institutional investors is the fact that although Alibaba is a Chinese company, it's in fact incorporated into the Cayman Islands, mm -hmm. which means that it won't be able to be part of the S&P 500 when it goes uh, public. It won't be able to be part of any major benchmark because you have to be located in the country where mm -hmm. these are. Do you think that this will impact some larger institutions from buying the store? No, I think uh, the larger institutions will still want a piece of this. When you have, you talked about their profits how, uh, and their rising revenues. When the U.S. economy is gaining 2 to 3 percent per quarter and Alibaba grew 50 percent year over year for the most recent quarter, these institutional investors will want that growth, that exposure to China, the social. The e so they're willing to overlook all of these obstacles just to have yeah. that maximum exposure to the Chinese consumer. With Alibaba's record size, it's still moving and growing like a startup. So the investors will want a, a piece of that action. Matt, the big question is where do we think Alibaba will price? Bloomberg is saying they're looking at a $20 billion IPO. Mm -hmm. What do you think and what do you think the actual individual share will price at? So Pripco believes the valuation will, will hit a final value of between 225 billion and 250 billion. That's the final valuation. Valuation, yes. But in a roadshow, an initial pricing, which we'll probably receive on Monday, or Friday for the roadshow launching on Monday, we'd expect them to have a more conservative initial price range and then build up as they approach the Give IPO. Give me a number, Matt. What's that initial price range? At $225 billion, that's a 95 to... But they're only looking to raise $20 billion. Yeah. Uh, a price range, they're going to raise, Yahoo is $20 billion that they have to sell at a two, $200 billion valuation. And Alibaba is not going to the U.S. market and through all this trouble to not raise money themselves. So they'll raise close to $40 billion. So where do you think an individual stock will price at then? $95 to $105 is a... $225 billion to $250 billion price range. Now, there is a concern that they should perhaps 
price lower because you don't want to have that post IPO pop mm -hmm. like you had with Facebook, yeah. which raised 16 billion. And then the stock took a hit for a couple yeah. of weeks, even months afterwards. Is that something that you think they're thinking about? Yeah, that's why I said that they will initially price at a more conservative range. Mm -hmm. And that actually, the 225 to 250 billion is our target valuation at the end of the day, where we think the market will price Alibaba. All right, well, we're all anxiously awaiting to see uh, when that IPO is going to happen. Thank you so much for your insight. Thank Matt you. Matt Turlip, Senior Analyst at Financial Researches, Privco.